am beginning to understand your sense of humor. It's what they call sarcastic, isn't it? I lose brain cells just listening to you. I thought you would have been at the engagement party. You know, an engagement party is about the only thing I can think of that would be worse than spending time with you. I wonder if they have cake there. Hmm? I mean, they have cake at weddings, but I just don't know about engagement parties. Oh, maybe it's bad luck. You know, like when the groom sees the bride. Oh, you know, it's so cute. There's little tiny cupcakes with little tiny brides and grooms on it. Miss Banks, when are you going to get the hell out of my house? I thought that ancient Greek said that hospitality was sacred. Good God. Did you actually say something that wasn't inane? <laughs> well, I read it in a book that was on my nightstand. You read? You know, I really don't know how that sweet Maggie puts up with you. Maybe I was hallucinating. You say hurtful things on purpose. I'm desperate. I'll pay you to go away. You could be a very rich woman somewhere. No. Anywhere. No, no one, no. Mission Money can buy anything. I'm not leaving Salem until I know that Dr. Marlena is okay and that I get to see you with my own two eyes. Well, you go ahead. I'll call you a cab. Well, no, Sammy. Sammy said that all the family can visit right now. I mean, don't you think that's odd? I mean, I think that's odd. But what can you do? I mean, you can't fight City Hall. Only it's not City Hall. I mean, it would be the hospital, right? Have you heard of a hotel? Well, I couldn't hurt Maggie's poor feelings by staying in a hotel, but I will tell you one thing. I'm sure you will. I wish I didn't let Sammy take that Dr. Marlena doll to the hospital. Because I just wonder if I'm ever going to see it again. Well, I made the Dr. Marlena doll using my own hair. I thought it would be real special for her. Yes, that would do it. And it turned out really nice, if I do say so myself. I, it's kind of hard, though, because I had to pull out one hair at a time, and it's, the hair is really little, so I had to use tweezers. I've died. I have died and gone to hell. Oh, gracious. You are such a gleam of gush. You didn't die and you're not in hell. You're in your own living room. Have you ever thought about getting a puppy? I mean, you wouldn't be such a sour puss if you had a little puppy look in your face. I'm begging you. You have got to go. My, my sanity hangs in the balance. Okay. I know what's going to cheer you up. Your demise? There is an Elvis marathon on Cozy TV. And I can't remember what channel it's on. Mm. Did you know that um, one of the co-stars in Loving You became a cloister nun? Cloister. Val Silas. <gasps> oh, my stars and garters! And look what's on, it's the mummy! And he's all bandaged up in there. And you don't know who or what's in there. <gasps> and you don't know what's in there or who's in there. You've got to stop doing that. I, I just had this strong, mystical moment. It was a clear vision that Elvis is alive. You know, I think you're right. Elvis is alive, and he needs you. You need to be on the next plane to Graceland. Not Elvis, Elvis. Right. Not Elvis. Elvis. I see him. I mean, he's, he's wrapped up in bandages like a mummy. I mean, what, what, what can that mean? What can that mean? I mean, maybe somebody put him in a tomb or, or... Livy Nell, I mean, she buries her people alive. I mean, maybe he's in Egypt or, uh, or Alemania. Or maybe in University Hospital, recuperating from burns over 90% of his body. In University Hospital. Courtesy of his soulmate, Samantha Brady. <laughs>